Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the Rule 17, which is the action by Stand on Visa. Rule 17, action by Stand on Visa. So let's start in with a paragraph 1. Where one of the vessel is to keep out of the way, and the other shall keep her course and speed. To, give, to understand the meaning of this paragraph, let's watch this video. In this diagram, we're going to place ourselves on the red vessel, and we're going to be approaching the white vessel. I'm going to use the same diagram to explain this rule in full, so we'll keep coming back to this one. And it's safe to assume that risk of collision exists, we've already monitored and determined we're on a constant bearing. So in this situation, it's a crossing situation, and as the two vessels are approaching each other, the red vessel is the stand-on vessel. So in, according to the first part of Rule 17, she needs to maintain her course and speed. Paragraph 2. The latter vessel may however take action to avoid collision by her maneuver alone. As soon as it becomes apparent to her that the visa required to keep out of the way is not taking appropriate action in compliance with these rules. So this means the latter visa being the stand-on visa, she may take action as soon as it becomes apparent. Letter B. When from any course, the visa required to keep her course and speed finds herself so close that collision cannot be avoided by the action of the gateway vessel alone. She shall take such action as well based best it to avoid collision. Basically, this paragraph says the stand-on vessel must take action as soon as the action of the gateway vessel alone is not gonna be enough. So let's take a look at this video. So in this diagram, again we're on the red vessel still, so we're the stand-on vessel and I'm expecting the white vessel to take action. Once we get to this point here, I expect her to have taken action by now. In the previous rule we said that she needs to take early and effective action to stay well clear. So in my view she hasn't taken early action so she's not in compliance with the rules. So at this point I may take action to avoid collision by my manoeuvre alone. However. For this example, I'm just going to carry on. So we're going to continue on our route, and now we're getting ever closer, and I'm even more twitchy now, because at this point, I know whatever action the white vessel takes is not going to be enough to avoid collision. She comes right round to starboard, as so, she's still going to hit us. At this point, I must take whatever action will best aid to avoid collision. This particular example, I might, for example, kick my stern out to starboard to give her a little bit more space. Once you're so close that the giveaway vessel alone cannot avoid collision, that is when you must take action. At the first point where it's apparent to you that she's not, that is when you may take action. C. A power-driven vessel which takes action in a crossing situation in accordance with subparagraph A of, the ru of this rule to avoid collision with another power-driven power vessel shall if the circumstances of the case admit not alter course to Port Gore, a vessel on her own port side. So let's take a look at this example. Okay, so we're approaching each other now. We know risk of collision exists. I'm expecting the white vessel to take action. Once we get to this point, I may take action to avoid collision by my maneuver alone, but I don't know whether this is the place where the white vessel was always planning to turn, whether this is her designated closest point that she needs to take action. So if I did come round to port, and it was where she was due to take action, she has come round to starboard, I have come round to port, and we're going to hit each other bow to bow. If we come back, what action could we take? Well we can actually do whatever we like, the rule just says we can't come round to port for a vessel on our own port side. So probably the best bet is to come round to starboard. If she also comes round to starboard, you can see there's no risk of collision now. And if she'd have maintained her course and speed, we would have just been paralleling along her previous track. Again, there would have been no risk of collision. Once we've got no risk of collision, we've got all the time in the world to decide what to do next. 